So today I'm going to use these three molds, but you can work with any you have at home. The base is going to be this sauerkraut glass jar for my decoration. Also, I have the wood glue and the brush. For this design, I'm going to use three of these acrylic laces, which I previously made. My palette knife, my air dry clay, also, I'm going to use these gemstones. I buy these very cheap, about less than a euro per sheet, but they have an adhesive back which I remove, so I can stick them on with super glue. This is just my preferred kind as they are very affordable, easy to get hold of, and easy to store. And this is the super glue for them. Let's start by making the clay parts for this project. Sometimes when there's leftover clay like this, it can get a little bit harder to mold. If you have too much trouble with it, just add a little bit of water or start with fresh clay. I have to make sure that I press the clay into the mold hard so all the details are visible. Since I'm not going to use the bone part, I just shape out the skull with my palette knife. Do not worry if the shape is not perfect because you can always make it look better by reshaping it later on. I'm showing you the time lapse of molding the pieces so you can see the techniques when I use water and the process. Sometimes there are molds with smaller parts and if you want to get them out with one piece you need to make sure that there's enough clay in every part. Here I'm just putting a little more in the end of the wings so it won't rip and have the full shape. Usually work around the mold to loosen the clay inside. With frames like this, it's better to roll the clay a little bit, so it's easier to mold. And I'm just cutting the excess off with the pellet knife by going around it. In this part, I'm combining the butterfly and the skull to create a new, unique shape. First, I'm separating the wings of the butterflies, which then going to be attached to the eye part of the skull. You can use the same technique with any other shapes, so there's no limit in what design you would like to achieve. Now I have all the parts ready so I can get gluing. I am using the same wood glue to stick clay parts together too. First I am brushing the back of the wing and put it on the skull. Then with the use of some shaping tools I blend them together to secure the whole shape. Don't worry if you don't have the same tools as I do. You can use anything with similar shapes like an end of a pencil or a blunt knife.
In the same time while I'm doing this, I am also improving the details on the skulls too. I have the jar already primed with a coat of matte black spray paint ready to be decorated. I'm going to start with gluing the acrylic laces after marking their position with a pencil. This will give some dimension to my design. After finding their placement, I am lightly marking around them so the glue doesn't go around the edges much. You don't need a thick coat of glue, but if you're using this type of laces, make sure you push them in properly, especially around the edges. You can always clean the excess glue off with a wet wipe, but it also dries clear, and if you paint over it, it will barely be visible. Now that it's done, I can start gluing the clay pieces on. I'm going to start with the frames first, then putting the butterfly skull inside. I am using different tools to push the skull onto the surface to make sure it will stick properly when drying. I leave the end of the wings to dry without getting it connected on purpose, but I will get back to that later on in this video. I will leave everything to dry overnight. It is now the next day and I'm just checking everything if it all dried well. So, as I previously told you, I have left the end of the wings to dry and I'm going to secure it, otherwise it would break off very, very easily. To do that, I need a very small piece of fresh clay, some wood glue and my palette knife. This technique can be applied in any similar situation. So I put some glue around and underneath where the tiny piece goes and shape everything very carefully with my palette knife. Yes, it seems a bit tedious, but for me it's easier to do this step with the solid part rather than doing this with while everything is still pliable. These pieces I'm adding dry quite fast as they are small, so I don't have to wait all night for everything to be dried and painted. Then I spray painted everything to black again because it is an option too if you prefer. Next step I am adding the gemstones or the rhinestones as it adds some extra details. I am gluing them with super glue. 
I lost my gemstone pen and I didn't uh, film the process because I made an alternative tool which was a bit awkward to use but it got the job done. We are going to go all around the lace and uh, it's going to look like this in the end. It can be easily painted with another layer of black spray paint, which I did, acrylic or chalky paint. I am now adding some gold paint to the whole design with this cadence acrylic paint and some bristle brushes. I use paint sparingly as I use the dry brushing technique. If you went over with the paint, don't worry, it can easily be corrected. All you need is the same color paint, in my case matte black, to brush around the edges and your design will look more clean. When the paint dries and you cover it with a layer of varnish, this small correction won't be visible at all. I put two layers of varnish to seal the paint and it actually looks great. For the final touch I'm going to use a string to decorate the top part of the jar. This is totally optional and you can use any other material too if you like. To secure the string you can glue it with a glue gun or a super glue. It's all done. I truly hope that you like this project. I wanted to show you how I use different materials and technique in this video. This was actually one of my first alternative jar designs. Thank you ever so much for watching, to be here and to see you at my next project. Have a lovely day!